Happy Monday, man. Monday. You know, it's so funny, man. Like we think like, you're, we're heading into a time of year now where you think there's be no Jets news. Like there's not there's a lot a, going on. There's no mini news. camp, no, no OTAs. Like there's nothing really going to be happening. Yeah. And lo and behold, every goddamn day is a story. <laughs> That's life is Jeff, man. Always, always something to talk about. So let's do, let's do my favorite topic. And because people think I hate Adam Gase, which I do. And now there's stories that he may limit Le'Veon Bell's reps and carries throughout the season and manage him differently. And let me just say this. The same things he's saying now is the same things he said last year. I'm going to, I'm going to watch all Le'Veon Bell's tape. I'm going to see what he's good at, what he's not good at, all this stuff. It didn't work out. So the built in excuse of the offensive line, which is fine, but that excuse is now gone this year. So, now you should be able to maximize all his talents. Because in, in theory, he's going to be gone. This is Le'Veon Bell's last year here. So why not get every ounce? Well, we can argue about that too if you want. But why not sure. get every ounce? He's your most explosive player on offense. The most dynamic guy you can have. Why not get – I mean, give him the ball 40 times a game for all I care. No, get every, like, aside, this is crazy. Aside from Sam Darnold, how Adam Gase uses Le'Veon Bell and how that relationship works throughout the year, I think that's his next biggest test. I mean, this is a guy that's a proven talent. And this is what we keep going back to with Adam Gase. How many guys does he bring in, whether they were good players or average players, where he brings them in and gets more out of them because his system elevates their talent? There aren't many examples of that. There are more examples Robbie Anderson of, of help with. Robbie Anderson was better before. Ryan Griffin got better. Here. Really? <laughs> there, are, there are more examples of guys leaving Adam Gase and going on to do better things. And yeah. so – to me, that's, this is the biggest test. You finally added an offensive line. Show you can get a guy with Hall of Fame ability to at least have, you know, what, 1,300 yards? Just maximize his talent. Yeah. Get him 20 carries a game. Use him out of the backfield. Use him in the slot. There's no reason Le'Veon Bell shouldn't be touching the ball 25 times a game. And, and if he does have a great season, he's not making that much money the year after. It's like $11.5 million. McCaffrey just signed for $16 million. So if you do get a great season out of him and it works out, you can bring him back, and if it doesn't, you move on. Yeah, and he he said it himself. He gets better with the more carries he gets in a game. He said it gets it gets time. It takes time to get started to get going. Then when it gets going, he's getting rhythm, gets in sync, which a lot of running backs are like that. Like I, I, I just hate that. Like this is already becoming another excuse for Adam Gates, like another guy that he's going to be able to say, all right, you know, I'm just going to move on from him. And like you know, with the talk about Sam Darnold being a make or break season in year three, just nonsense. Uh, exactly. Like, we have all these excuses built in for Adam Gase, but, like, why isn't he on the hot seat? He's been a head coach now in this division, entering year six. At, well, see, at what point do the expectations grow for him? Well, see, like, I, listen, my expectations for the, the entire team are increased, the offense especially now. See, like, my, my thing is the offensive line is going to be improved. How much, we don't know, but to be better than last year. And these are guys that he wants. These are guys that they yeah. prove they want everything else. There'll be, you know, challenges of getting the chemistry down and all this other whatever. But it's like if you, if you know Becton is a, just a mammoth in the run game, you can just maul people over, run the ball behind them 40 times a game or 25 times a game until they stop it. Like the Adam Gates, the thing I hate about, I'm scared about the most is that he has an offense and he doesn't adjust it to his team. He has At an some ego. Point, you got, you got to, like, listen, obviously if Le'Veon Bell's not your running back, okay. But he's here last year, he's here this year. You, as a head coach, you adapt, you adjust, and you make it work. Yep. Like you can't say, you know what, oh, pff, not my guy, I'll wait. Like, no, you maximize his talent. That, that's what the good head coaches do. Whether there's they injuries, do. yes. Look at John Harbaugh. He yep. made the whole freaking offense for Lamar Jackson. Doug like, Peterson he, last year, I mean. But not even that, but look, yeah, at all yeah. the, look at all the quarterbacks that went down last year. Duck, you know, Duck Hodges is playing and Mason Rudolph and all the guys that beat the Jets, every backup quarterback that beat the Jets. Yep. You're know, like, oh, you know, just come on. Like, you got to adjust. And now it's like all his excuses are gone because he has a, he had all last year, the offseason, the draft, crazy, all this time to figure out what in the hell he's doing, especially now when, Nothing but downtime. If he's a guru or an offensive guy, I say, listen, okay, I had Bell last year. This didn't work. But now I can expect my offensive line to be this much better. And, and the, the other thing that bothers me is this whole – our whole conversation right now could have been avoided. You now it could be avoided by just answering the question, you know what, we're going to do the best we can with Le'Veon Bell to get the most out of him. Don't talk about – you know, he doesn't need motivation in terms of, like, conditioning. The guy's like, he's a gym yeah. rat. He's always in yeah. shape. Like, why even go down this path again? Just say, you know what? We like the guy we drafted, Perrine, but we have a great running back here. We're going to get the most we can of him, and we all move on. We don't even talk about it. But the story never goes away. Again, that's what bothers me, like, not just with Bell, but even, like, with Jamal Adams. Like, when you're talking about guys that are trying to come in and, like, change your culture to a certain extent, 
Like Le'Veon Bell did all the right things, said all the right things, yeah. worked his ass off last year, was a positive example on and off the field. Yet, you know, we're talking about possibly moving on from him after this year. He's 28 years old, a guy that, you know, we haven't had a talent like him on offense in about 20 years. You know, we saw the way Curtis Martin came in and, and changed this franchise, not by himself, but, you know, a, a guy like him, I, the same thing with Jamal Adams. You don't get rid of talented players that have the ability to change your culture. Uh, Especially I respected think it's as ones. That. Like, yeah, this they're is respected guy from, around the league, both of them. Yeah, and it's like the thing with Bell. It's like it's it just we had the same exact conversation last year, the yeah. same exact conversation because we all knew Adam Gates didn't like him, and now yeah. he's like yeah. he can't he just handles this so poorly. He does, and that's why I worry. Even if like there is more of a focus on running the ball this year. I, I think it could be where you see, you know, P. Ryan getting a bunch of carries and him spreading it out more to show it's his system that's making it work and that yep. it's not Le'Veon Bell. He's Donald. arrogant like that. Yeah, exactly. It's all his ego that drives it. He wants to show that he's right. I'd love to be wrong. I, I'd love for him to just feed Bell and, you know, them to have a great relationship yep. this year. Do I see that happening? No. No, and you said well, you, you'll give him less opportunities, get less productivity and say, you know what, the production doesn't match the contract. He's got to go. Yep. Yep. Like, it's just, this is all too predictable. And like the people that are going to give us feedback saying, stop bashing gays. This is just what we saw last year. Yeah. It's the conversation. Some of the things we saw in, in Miami. And then you look at, you know, you know, Joe, uh, Joe Douglas is very high on Josh Adams. That's, um, you know, and Kenneth Dixon for that matter. He's high on both yeah. of them. Yeah. So, and they just draft the guy, obviously they like, yeah. but it's just, to me, it's like, you got to use... mention Trenton Cannon. Huh? Dude, seriously. But and he, he's probably the speed guy they're looking for, Four, but it's speed. just, it, it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, you, I'm just hoping that this is all just off-season nonsense that we're dealing about, but I don't really have any faith in it because Adam Gase is that – he's that arrogant and stubborn. No, I, I completely agree. But, like, something that you mentioned also, like, I, I actually agree with you that I think the Jets could do better this season, but their record might not reflect it. Absolutely. And, and I would be okay with bringing Adam Gase back if he shows he can utilize Bell the right way, if he gets the most out of Sam Darnold and he takes a size – leap in year three if the offense week in and week out they're competing they have a, a yes. game plan they make adjustments like those little things if you're competing against better teams especially on the road with some of the teams they're facing if he's doing that and they go eight and eight all right fine bring him back you showed some progress that's fine if you know even if you win seven games though and the offense looks like a mess in half of them no he shouldn't be brought back i think you got to look at the results and you know go from there if he's using guys the right way if darnold's you know showing the the kind of progress that you need to see from the third year quarterback yeah and the thing is like that's the whole thing i guess happened last week where it's a oh, playoffs or bust for adam gase and I'm like dude yeah. this is not a playoff team like that's my personal opinion but the expectations for me are we watched the worst offensive football last year they were horrendous yeah. so it's like okay you took you spent some money on the offensive line you drafted a guy you added some receivers you drafted a receiver the expectation, no matter who your schedule is, is better offense. Like, we want to see competent play calling after the first 15 plays. Yep. You want to see maximize – you talked about maximize Bell. What are you going to do with Chris Herndon? You, you obviously like Perriman and Mims. You have a ton of speed on offense. There's no reason why you can't be spreading the field out and doing certain things. But the most important thing is Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold has to substantially grow. Like, if Sam Darnold plays 10 times better and they win six games, I'm fine with it. Yeah, because that the whole goal is to get the offense better and Sam Darnold better. Like that's it. That's what he was sold to us as a head coach. And that's that, my that's the that's the one thing he should be able to do. You can find somebody if Greg Williams suddenly you know, you know goes backwards in year two. You can find somebody to you know coach the defense. He was brought in. Adam Gates was brought in to coach up Sam Darnold. If he cannot do that, you have to bring in somebody else because you have to make a decision on his fifth year option. So he's yeah. going to have year number four in his fifth year option where you want to get two years with a new coach. You're not going to bring Adam Gates back. I don't think for year four and year five with Darnold, if you know, you're not seeing progress this year. So, yeah, but the expectations got to be like, and like I said, I'm not, listen, I want to win. We all want to go to playoffs, all this shit, but like we all admitted how bad this roster was going into free agency after free agency. I can't really say it's a significant upgrade. I think it's, they did okay. The draft, you know, some good things as well, but there's like to expect your entire draft class to contribute right away and be all pro, you know, pro bowl players this year is asking too much. So it's like, all right, you want to see better line play, better play calling, much, much better play. That's the thing for me, much better play out of Sam Darnold. Like, he's got to stick and go from here to here, like, way up there. Because it's, it's, not, it's not make or break for Sam Darnold, but it's, dude, he, he's a good quarterback. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not trying to make excuses for Darnold because people say that all the time. You guys always make excuses for Sam. Like, no, it's not even about that. It's about Adam Gase showing that his system can, can get the most out of a talented quarterback because yep. we've seen the flashes from Sam, and he's 22 years old. Like, there are quarterbacks that were drafted this year that are older than him. 
You he's know? also got to do things too, man. He's got exactly. He's, he's got exactly. to take on a more vocal role and and yep. improve footwork technique and not throw the ball away and take terrible sacks. Like shit, young quarterbacks shouldn't be doing, but he's doing but, it. That's fine. But, that's and, and you look at the young quarterbacks that do that around the league. They're usually coached up well. Yep. Har- Harbaugh, Andy Reid, uh, yep. Peterson, like yep. that. That's what you need to get the most out of a young quarterback. So, uh, do I expect Arnold to be able to do some things on his own? Yeah. But to, to what extent, I, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know what the expectation should be. Yeah, but this, like you, you said it, like this year for an offense, there's no excuses whatsoever to not be much better. Yeah. Better line. I mean, the receivers. I'm like, the first couple games could be chemistry issues and just getting used to the system or everything else. But this is Adam Gates' offense. Yeah. Him and Sam have been together now for a year. Like, Bell knows the offense. You know, like, this – some of these things shouldn't like – Crowder knows it. Like, they should be okay. Like, it's – and they should have substantial drives, time possession they should win, do all these things. But now, does that translate into wins and losses? It may not. The schedule is a bitch, dude. And the Jets always suck no matter who the head coach is on the West Coast, not to mention the, the quality of teams they're playing, where they could be a much better team and win six games. As long as they're playing good. And, and the other thing that you want to see out of him, and he's a veteran coach, is better game management. Like, when you're getting blown out, okay, you can, you can mail things in, do stupid things. In close games, they're trying to come back. He did a lot of things where you're like, what in the hell are you doing? Like, we bashed Todd Bowles up, down, and backwards for stuff. Yeah. The and then you, yeah. when you say about Adam Gase, oh, you guys are just being negative. No, the same stuff we ripped Todd Bowles for, the same thing Adam Gase did. If even worse, because the games were closer. Yep. So he's got to, like, he has to get better, and they all have to do, the, it's all in the offense. I mean, the defense, I think, is going to be okay. I mean, if the defense gets torched because they're just, you know, they're, you know, they're, it, they're it, a little bit light in the secondary, but. It's hard to imagine the defense not being equal to what they were last year. I mean, they added enough competition at least in the secondary between Desir, Quincy Wilson, Bryce Hall, um, and then you're getting back Mosley as well. So I, I would think the defense is at least going to be equal, if not, you know, slightly better. You hope maybe Playing you get a little more out of Quinn and Williams though. also. Yeah. I mean, you so, got to get – you got the whole key is going to get a pass rush, dude, because these quarterbacks yeah. now you can't let them stand back there for 10 years and, you know. Well, that's where Quinn and Williams – I mean, if, if he could have a breakout year and be what, you know, we thought he was going to be when we drafted him, that would be – He's got a new YouTube channel. You see that? No, I didn't. Yeah, new YouTube channel. Check it uh, out. What's he talking about? Yeah, he's got time uh, on his hands, I guess. I don't even want to guess. 